Hello audience. It's been a while since I've done anything on this project. Now, like I said in the last video, I needed to get started on the wood structure, particularly the sills, and I needed some dimensions and a few details. There's still a lot of questions I had about the bodies, how they're constructed. Now, in the meantime, I have since found someone locally who has an original touring car body I was able to look at and that answered a lot of questions. Another thing is searching for all this I found well I was recommended this book. This is the Model T Ford owner the best of... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name but this is in print. I think it was about 45 bucks. Most Model T parts houses have it. Now the thing about this book is it has a few pages of body specifications, a few dimensions for the touring and runabout bodies, and some dimensions for the top and a few old dimensions for the chassis. Now this is exactly what I needed. Now it covers the like 15 to 21 or 17 to 21 bodies which are nowhere near the same as 1913 but many of the general dimensions originated in 1913 and were carried over like for example the height of the body panels according to the measurement in this book I checked it with the originals I have and they're the same the length of the rear doors I think are the same so within reason I can use a lot of it like the dimensions around the cowl obviously are completely different so I can't use that but I got enough now to where I can go back to work on it. Now the sills, one reason why I haven't started on them is I haven't decided how exactly I was going to make them or what material to use. Now the 1913 sills they were underbuilt when they were new and they caused a lot of problems. In fact they were so bad that Later that year they added a bunch of steel braces all over the body to try to make them hold together. So some kind of reinforcement here and there is needed. I couldn't decide if I wanted to put extra steel under the sills or make the sills out of steel and put wood around them or what kind of wood to use. So I, that's all been up in the air for a while now. Now as for the wood structure and the sills, I have figured out a way where I can continue progress on the body without making them, and I'll talk about that more later on in the video. Also another thing that's happened this past few months is I found more parts. For example, I found two more door hinge sets. These are 1914 and newer. I got two of them for five bucks. So most likely what I'm probably going to do is just use the later hinges and not worry about it. I'm not too crazy about the idea yet, so I'm just going to keep thinking about it until it's time to install the doors. And I'll make a decision then. A few other things. Like this. This is a front seat backrest panel. It's for an earlier body, like a 13 or 14, hence the marking, 1914. That's what he put on it. Obviously, it's got some really bad rust damage, but I just bought this to use as a pattern. Now, on these earlier bodies, this edge up here, as you can see, it doesn't have a tab on it that goes up to, points to the outside. That was added later, like. 1915 or 16 somewhere in there. The early ones are like this, or at least some of them are. So that's why I grabbed this one. It looked like an early one. I also found a front seat, no, back seat, seat riser, or this year it was more like just a filler panel because the seat frame was made of wood. This is the panel that goes between the seat and the floor. Now once again, we can tell this is an early one because it's just a filler panel. It doesn't have the channel up top to hold the seat cushion on or anything like that. As these, as these cars got newer, a lot of the wood structure in them was replaced with steel and these panels, they just added stuff to them. Now, 
we can tell this is the back seat because of this part down here. It's notched out for the sills because the back seat floor is down at frame level, whereas the front seat is at sill level. Now this one can probably be restored or I can use it as a pattern to make a new one, but what I am going to do in this video is take the dimensions from this and a little bit of guesswork and make the same panel for the front seat. Now we'll see how that comes out. The first thing to do is to cut out a piece of sheet metal. Now I didn't make a pattern for this because it's a simple piece, it's flat and basically a rectangle. So I took the dimensions of the original and added a few inches on each corner. The lines don't need to be all that precision because we're going to cut a little off each end anyway later on. So now I have the panel cut out, roughly, and I'm starting to mark the, well actually I've finished marking the beads. Now I started with a actual point of center here, so I based everything off that. The beads on the original, I measured the distance between them, which was five and a half inches, and marked out the centers parallel to top edge here, then marked out the vertical beads. Now the bead on the bottom, the width is the same as the back seat because the sills are the same distance apart from the front to the back. The door posts, however, go out further because the body gets wider at the top as, a, as it goes back. So this bead here is at a different angle than this one. Now, I don't have an exact pattern of how the front seat bead is supposed to be right here, but it doesn't directly touch anything. It's kind of supposed to be parallel to the doorpost, but as long as it's in the general direction is all that really matters. So what I did was I measured the angle this is from straight up and down, which was I think three inches, and cut that in half. So this is one and a half inches. And if it doesn't line up with the door post exactly, it doesn't really matter. This is under the seat, it's in the shade, no one's really going to see it. So then I measured the outlines for the beads. Now the thing is with the rollers I'm using, I don't have a roller that's the exact shape of the original bead. I have to do one crease at a time, which means I have to roll everything twice. However, in these areas here where the beads meet, if I had a roller that did both sides at once, it would put a crease across here that I would have to remove. So it's going to make these intersections easier to make. Now things are a bit crammed around here. I'm having to work around all these engine blocks back here and I can't move the roller out here because there's a car just over here. And if you're wondering why I don't move the car and move all these engines, it's because there's a non-running car parked in front of this one and there's another non-running car parked in front of that one. So, not the most optimal situation. but. If you wait for the most optimal situation to happen, you'll probably never get anything done, as I've learned the hard way many times. And I got the beads rolled into it. Not as smooth of a job as I had hoped for, but it'll still work. One big problem I ran into is the bead in the center. As you can see, it's in the center, which means the panel has to be halfway inside the roller and I discovered the roller won't, that I have won't allow a panel any wider than 18 inches. So I had a choice. I was either going to custom build a tool just for that one bead 
or I was going to trim the sides down to 18 inches. And the second one is what I chose to do, as you can see. Now, it's not too much of a problem because I may not even need that much on it. Now, if I need more material on there, I can just cut out a sheet metal triangle and weld it in. This is a really easy place to weld. It's a flat surface. There's no beads in the way. And I can grind it pretty smooth, and the welded seam would be behind the wood anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Now I have this over at the break, where I'm bending the top and bottom edges over, just like the original. And we got it looking pretty good. Now, the final step is I'm going to go over it with a hammer and tap out all the extra creases I didn't want and sharpen the edges a little more on the top and bottom and then trim it and should be good. Now I'm making these creases a little more sharp with the vise because my homemade brake doesn't make these all that sharp. But I need to work on that a little. So here we have it finished. Well finished enough for now. I like the other panels. I'm gonna wait till I need it then fine-tune it a little. Now Honestly, it could have come out a lot better. I made a few mistakes in it, particularly with rolling the beads, so it needed a lot more hammering than I expected when it was done, but still, it's nicer than most originals out there, and it's still usable. And like I said, it goes under the seat. No one's really gonna see it, so I really need to concentrate my effort on the outside panels getting those fine-tuned because that's what everyone's gonna stare at. And if it gets to the point where I just can't stand the bad workmanship of this, I can just make another one later on, but I think I'll end up using this one anyway because cleaning this up will be less effort than making a new one. So now we really need to start working on the structure of the body, particularly the wood sills. Now my plan is for the time being, I'm just going to make temporary wood, like I was used 2x4s or whatever I have laying around. I thought of this idea a while ago. I didn't like it at first because the temporary wood's really going to look tacky, but it's got its benefits. Like, I can adjust it, I can replace pieces if I make mistakes, it's cheap wood, I won't be out anything. And when it comes time to put the body together for real, and I make the real wood, I can use the temporary wood as patterns, so I'll make fewer mistakes. So that's the plan, and hopefully I'll start getting around to that maybe the end of this month. I don't know. Hopefully, anyway. So, in the meantime, thank you for watching.